Easter blessings to each and every one of you, and welcome to Galilean Lutheran Church this morning. A special welcome to our visitors and guests. We ask if you sign the guest register as you leave the worship today, so we keep in contact with you and keep you on our prayer list. This is a day the Lord has made, and what a beautiful day he made for each one of us. Christ is risen, and through, his, through him all creation is made new. Indeed, God shows no partiality. Christ's resurrection truly brings life to everyone. We sing hymns and praise, we gather around sacred words, and proclaim God's full faithfulness, power and love in the Feast of Holy Communion. And with the women at the tomb, we are astonished, elated, and grateful. We depart with joy to proclaim the good news of God's endless love. There's a few um, bulletins in the announcement for things coming up. Check your mailboxes for information from Dave Fritz. The galley and gals are going to be meeting on Thursday, April 20th. We'll be going to the airport restaurant, Avian Azula. Um, gather Bible study April 27th here at the church. And the Pine Ridge, Denise has been working on Pine Ridge again this year and is a blessing to our congregation and a blessing to Pine Ridge. And so she's taking her offerings, her gift back there in a box. They need socks, um, children's and adult sizes, t-shirts with no emblems on it, and ice cream buckets. So please see, have all these items here by April 23rd. Quilters are meeting on the April 11th and 9th here at the church to tie quilts, they're gonna be working on that again this year. And council meet next Wednesday, excuse me, next Sunday after worship. And we'll have our noisy offerings again starting next week, for, and that goes to Lutheran Disaster Relief. Is there any prayer request or a celebration you'd like to share?
Lord is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's try that one more time. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. You may be seated. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given a new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported. As citizens of the new creation, let us give thanks to the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters of our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the living, life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you in the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. We continue on page 147 in the front of the hymnal. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory or is this is the feast of victory for our God Alleluia Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Bless 
singing honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever, amen. Is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first lesson is from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. If you'll read responsively um, uh, the bold print from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts out. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Second reading from Colossians chapter 3. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, Lord, to 
whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. It's Easter Sunday. And the sun is shining. And our spirits are full of hope and rejoicing. It is on Easter morning, that Sunday long ago, that the women went to the tomb and saw that it was empty. And today begins the season known as Eastertide, 50 days of celebrating Jesus' resurrection. Easter is not just one Sunday. There's too much to celebrate. The resurrection is such a mystery that it calls for grand celebration. One day alone won't do. A new dawn has come. From the darkness of despair on Good Friday, when all seemed lost, the rays of light on this morning come through the shadows of fears and tears and loss. A new air has begun. Easter is not an end to creation's problems, but it is assurance that a new air has begun. The sun will rise. Now in all four of the Gospels, it is the women who first come to the tomb. In Matthew's telling, note that the women did not bring spices to anoint a dead body. No, the women came to see the tomb because they heard Jesus say he would be raised on the third day. They came to see if Jesus was alive. And throughout his telling of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, Matthew has Mary Magdalene and Mary, the other Mary come to this point through clues in his gospel. They come to see the tomb. They come to see the tomb. Now the Greek word, I, I cannot pronounce it very well, but thoiorosai means to look at. They came to see, they came to look at that tomb, to discern and analyze and understand what might have happened. Now it's also interesting that that Greek word is the root for our word in English called theater. Theater is dramatic, right? Drama. And as they get near the tomb, a drama unfolds. These women have stayed with Jesus 
if only from a distance, witnessing the crucifixion. They have followed Jesus from Galilee, and along the way, they have provided for Jesus food and drink. And it is the women who stay, even though from a distance, while Jesus is arrested and crucified. It is the male disciples that flee and hide. These women come to the tomb with expectations. They do not bring embalming spices in Matthew's gospel. They come to see the tomb and what theater and drama takes place. For the second time in just a few days, the earth shakes. Have any of you been in a earthquake? Has anybody? Um, when we lived in north, northeast Nebraska, one day I thought something moved. We lived in Randolph. And later that day, I heard that in Knox County, maybe 30, 40 miles away, there was an earthquake that day. It's an odd feeling to go, you can't explain it if you haven't been through it, but the earth does shake. And in just a few days, these women experience the earth shaking twice. And as the earth shakes, the tombstone is rolled away. And an angel appears like lightning and sits on the stone. And the guards faint in terror. Now you have to think that maybe this angel had just a little bit of fun with his dramatic entrance. We'll shake him up a little. Lightning. It got everyone's attention. The women meet the gaze of the angel and with fear, they look upon the angel. He invites them to the look in the empty tomb. There is great fear, but there is also great joy. The women become the first apostles, for we need to remember that the word apostle means a person sent forth. The women were sent forth to tell their brothers that Jesus was alive. They turn and they run. Their hope has been met. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. And suddenly, they run into Jesus. They fall at his feet. They hold his feet. He is alive. He is real. They worship their Lord, the Messiah, the promised one. The Lord is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. And Jesus says, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. These words, go and tell my brothers, carry a powerful meaning. There is the gift of forgiveness. Those who betrayed and deserted him and acted as his enemies, Jesus is now calling brothers. Jesus does not rebuke them, but calls them to be with him. Meet me in Galilee. He will later make them into apostles, sent ones. His brothers will tell the story, the story that the Lord is risen, the Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. These women arrive on the first day of the week. The first day we look of the week we look as a new beginning. Our Lenten journey gives way to Easter tide, a life that is lived in light of the resurrection. The trumpet flowers of the Easter lilies signal a dawn of a new day. Things will never be the same. Christ has risen from the tomb. 
and the brothers will struggle with the news of that the women share. He is alive. They are skeptic. They refuse to believe. There will be a mix of trust and doubt, of belief and disbelief in the weeks ahead. This miracle may be dismissed by some as never happening. Or with time, Easter, we kind of get used to, and the astonishment of Jesus rising from the dead will be lost. The Marys, with fear and great joy, proclaim the good news. The mystery of the resurrection has been made known to them. They had stayed with Jesus from a distance, but now show up at the tomb with great expectation. It's Easter Sunday. What does this mean? Such good news for us today. It means that we are to fear not. Fear not, for God is victorious over the powers of death. We are not to fear. We are reminded that God is in charge. For we are all united with the risen Lord on this day, we remember that we are united with Christ. Fear not, fear not those with despair and guilt. Fear not, for God forgives you. Fear not, because we have been reconciled to God and with each other as God's children. Fear not, but rather be encouraged in a world filled with hate and violence and scapegoating, know that one day God will overcome the violence of this world. Fear not, God is with us. On Easter, we remember that God has taken one of the worst things in the world, the Roman cross, a horrible death, and made that cross into the tree of life, eternal life. The cross, the empty tomb, is a divine mystery. Sometimes hard to explain, sometimes hard to understand, but it is a mystery in which we trust and believe that God is working for us. The sun has risen, the sun has risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen.
please rise if you're able, and we'll share in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the, the Father of the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from the God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He descended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory, to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the word to come. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for all theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim the gospel equipped all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection and all we say and do. Risen Lord, in your mercy, Hear our <clears throat> you bring abundant life throughout creation. The green blade rises and all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards and orchards and those who tend to them. Feed us for the fruits of creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your just, justice in every nation of the world, especially in Ukraine, and all of the areas of conflict in our world, that all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Anoint your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by this His example in our ministries of healing, care and outreach. We pray for all who are sick or hospitalized. We especially lift up today Jane, Mary Lou, Marilyn, Dan, Susie, Raymond, Elaine, Rachel, Lori, Brooklyn, Lincoln, Larry, and Lorraine, Tom, Stephanie, Mary Lee, Duane, Ruth, and Amy, and for all the health care workers who care for them. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have put gladness in our hearts, inspire musicians and dancers to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our assembly song. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our <clears throat> As you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. <clears throat> with, your <clears throat> excuse me. with your holy ones who have sung your praise, free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Rejoice in the victory of Christ's resurrection. We lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and ever eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of God be with you always. And also with you. Share that peace with your neighbors.
Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of the Savior, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, he gave thanks. He took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen come and know christ broken and poured out for you for communion today we will go clockwise. So you come this way. Um, there is bread and there is wine and there is 
uh, grape juice. The cups are here, grab a cup. I will give you bread and then we'll put the wine over here and then the cups go back over there. And if you need me to come out, let me know and wave me down if I forget. were barred and all the windows fastened down. I spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound, half in hopeless sorrow and half in fear the day would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away. And just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. On the gate began to rattle, and a voice began to call. I buried to the window and looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary, and so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me and told us where she'd been. She said they moved him in the night, and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away, and now his body isn't there. just an empty shell and how or where they'd taken him was more than I could tell well something strange had happened there but just what I didn't know John believed a miracle but I just turned to go circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high cause seen them crucify him then I saw him die back inside the house again with sweet perfume light that came from Back inside the house again, the guilt and anguish came. Everything I'd promised him just added to my shame. When at last it came to choices, I denied I knew his name. And even if he was alive, it wouldn't be the same. But suddenly the air was filled with strange and sweet perfume. Light that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room. Jesus stood beside me with his arms held open wide. And I fell down on my knees and just clung to him and cried. He raised me to my feet, and as I looked into his eyes, love was shining out from him like sunlight from the skies. Guilt and my confusion disappeared. Every fear I'd ever had just melted into peace. He 
he's alive and I'm forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive and I'm forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive. He's alive. He's Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word in this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. And now go into the world with this blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in a new creation. Amen. Our closing haunts him is now all the vault of heaven resounds.
Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.